So you're not starstruck at all then when you're at the big league camp, right? Eh? <laughs> it's, it's hard to be starstruck because I live with, like, I was living with Bo in the offseason. That's so cool. the big league camp. It's just my boy. I know them from when they signed. That's amazing. Hi, guys. This is Joshua Palacios with the Toronto Blue Jays, and you're listening to the Walk Off Podcast with Scott Belford and Adam Mack. Hope you enjoy. Is there a slump that you went through in your professional career to this point that kind of stands out in your mind? What did you learn from it, and what? how do you approach slumps at this point in your career? Oh, yeah. I've had um, two major slumps, but the one that stuck out to me the most was uh, when I was in high A. I was raking, doing everything right. It's like nothing I could do was wrong. And then um, my girlfriend and my best friend came down to see me. And the day they arrived, it sent me, not, it's not their fault, but it sent me into a spiral. So something went wrong, <laughs> and I went into like a, a 28 at that, like 80% strikeout. <laughs> <laughs> my girl's first time watching me play pro ball in real life. And my boy, and I'm just striking out left and right. I, like, I could not hit a ball to save my life. The ball just started disappearing to me. It was an invisible baseball. And um, I just couldn't do anything right at the time. But one thing I did learn is um, how I go about what I'm doing. Getting hits is kind of out of my control. Those things I can't control that. All I can control is what pitch I'm swinging at, what's my mindset when I get in the box, and just trying to square that baseball up. So that slump definitely showed me, like, hey, we're not going to chase some of these results that everybody else chases. We're going to bring it back to what's the process, what can I control, and then give myself the best opportunity to present myself with getting a hit. Man, do I ever relate to that. It's funny what the brain does, right? You're just mm-hmm. something you do all the time, and then all of a sudden you almost want to like validate all, all the work that you've been putting into something. Yeah. Like I always hate when my family is in the audience when I'm performing. Yes. And even though, you know, like they just want to be there to support and stuff. I'm like, oh man, I better be getting laughs. And they're going to be like, what is this guy doing? Right? <laughs> yeah, man. You start letting all those extra things get in there and then you end up striking out 80% of the time. Yeah. Oh, the brain is a funny thing, eh? <laughs> so you, my man, um, you're a very experienced pro ball player at this point. You're five years in, and I'm sure at times it's been tough. What would you say the most valuable experience or biggest lesson you've kind of taken away from the grind that is being a minor league ball player over the last half decade? Ooh, well, I'd say two things. One, learning how to save your money. That's number one. <laughs> minor league grind, you've got to learn how to live off the minimum possible that you can experience. Like, whatever the lowest you can spend is you got to learn how to live off of that. Yeah. So now I know going forth, I'm going to be able to save my money real well. I've got a lot of tricks now. I know what I'm doing. And the second thing would be um, going back to what we're talking about, trusting in the process, not looking up, not constantly looking at the scoreboard. When you're looking up, you're looking at the scoreboard or playing that comparison game, it could almost feel like, hey, man, I don't have a shot. I may never make it. Look at all these things that have to go right. And when you put your head down, you focus and you pay attention and grind on what you can control. When you look up or every time some things may come up and you glance, you realize like, whoa, I'm moving a lot farther than I thought I'd ever be moving or farther than I thought I was at the moment. So one of the best things you can do is just put your head down and grind. I know it's always talked about the finances in minor league baseball. When you first started, in low A, was it a little eye-opening to you, even though you'd heard all about it? Um, when you first experience it, it opens your eyes. It does. It does. My <laughs> uncle's like my uncle and my dad both play pro ball. They told me about the Miley grind and the bus rides and everything. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And after a while, your dad, your uncle, just tell your stories. But <laughs> as, time, as time grew on, like, wow, I'm really in this thing. And you start looking at that bank account, and it's not going up very much, and it's going down really quickly. It's like, oh, man, we're going to have to change a few things about how we're living now. (laughs) It must be uh, pretty cool to kind of go through all that and now get to the point where I'm sure you spent that time in big league spring training this year and you're like, hey, we're pretty well looked after here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's always nice when the numbers go up. When those numbers go up, everything's a little more comfortable. You relax a little more. Eat a little better. (laughs) So, my man, have you always been... Uh, have you always hit left-handed or is that something that maybe like your dad or your uncle as you were younger were like, you should try swinging left? No, it's actually the opposite. Everybody uh, tried to get me to hit righty and I was just a natural lefty. Made no sense to most of them. <laughs> the only theory they've got is my great uncle uh, threw lefty and hit righty. 
So maybe there's <laughs> something in there. But um, I was a switch hitter when I was growing up because everybody thought, like, hey, you're supposed to be able to hit right, so hit right. Yeah. And then after a while, I gave it up and decided, you know what, if I can hit lefty on lefty, I might as well just stay here. It's a little easier. Well, it's funny what a big deal baseball does make of that lefty-righty split. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer hitting a right-handed pitcher? Honestly, I have no preference. And at some points, I won't lie, I'd rather hit a lefty. It's almost like you have to do more things right to hit the lefty. So you give yourself less room for error, and you've kind of locking in a little more. When's the last How time you hit? F- oh, sorry. When's the last time you hit from the other side of the plate? Oh, we're talking um, senior year in high school. Senior year in high school, I was hitting, switch hitting. Quick story: twisted my ankle, couldn't hit righty, so I decided just to hit lefty. And then I realized, like, wow, all right, it's a lot easier to just stay on this left side against both these guys. So I just stuck just it out. to concentrate on the one thing, eh? You- yeah, it made things a lot easier. Do you ever think about it when you're slumping? You go, man, maybe I'll just try from the other side. Oh, now you think about everything. I'll be thinking about standing up there with the middle. The guys hit in the middle. I've definitely seen some lefties where I've been like, yeah, I should be hitting at the right side right now. It'd be a lot easier to hit off the right side. There's every once in a while you got the guy throwing 100, like that lefty right. for the Phillies, where you're like, yeah, I'd rather be hitting on the right side of the plate. Right yeah. Now. How satisfying. I've always wondered this. When you go up to the plate, and the opposing manager pulls the pitcher and brings in a lefty to face you. How satisfying is it when you just get a hit anyways? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing when they go get the lefty because it's like, hey, at some point, I'm like, thank you. You just did me a favor. I'd rather hit over this guy. So when you get that <laughs> hit and you break all the baseball stereotypes and everything, the manager's pissed. It's a great feeling because you did everything you could to try to get me out. You thought about it, but you still couldn't do it. It's funny how regimented baseball is with that, eh? It's like, mm-hmm. if there's a stereotype in baseball, we stick to it. Even if the numbers don't necessarily <laughs> look that way, we're doing it. <laughs> that is facts. Now, you could be hitting 400 against a lefty. and then, All right, bring in the lefty specialist. <laughs> yeah. 